Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on investigating transformations of y equals cosine x using built-in graphs. We're going to investigate the graph of y equals a cosine and then in brackets or parentheses bx plus c on a Casio FX CG50. Now this feature may be available on other Casio graphic calculators, you just need to check your model. We're going to describe the transformations from y equals cosine x as a changes, b changes, and c changes. And a, b, and c are variables that we can alter within the graph feature. So from the main menu, let's select five for graph. And then from within here, we want F4 for tool and F3 for built in. And you can see that we have a list here of some of the built in graphs that we can use with these variables. We're going to select the second from bottom one here, Y equals A cosine BX plus C and press execute. Once we have the graph there, press F5 for modify. Now let's take a look at what's going on on this screen. We have the variables listed in the bottom left hand corner here. At present, they're all marked as zero. Now at present, it's just displaying y equals zero because all the variables are zero. So let's alter those. Uh, let's start with a. If we just input one at this stage, so just press one, it's altering the a value to one. And you can see that the graph has changed to y equals one. Now at the moment, the, the bit that's within the cosine function is still zero, both B and C are zero. So cosine zero is one, so it's one times one, so Y equals one. And you can see that we're now displaying the graph of Y equals one. Do note that there is a yellow outline there of where the graph was previously before we did this alteration. So you can see the graph there at Y equals one and the yellow highlight at Y equals zero where it was previously. Let's navigate down and change B as well now. Now remember what we're doing is we're trying to set it up for Y equals cosine X, which is then where we want to start seeing how the transformations change it. Well, we've already viewed a little bit of what happens when it's zero. Uh, let's see what happens when B equals one. Now we can see, hopefully we can recognize this then now as uh, the graph of Y equals cosine X. So when B is one, that's one X, so it's cosine X. A is one, so it's one lot of cosine X. Y equals cosine X. And you can see in the X axis that the X values are being displayed in radians. You can see there is a local minimum here at the bottom uh, of around 3.14 or pi. And once again, you can see the yellow silhouette of where it was previously. Okay, we're going to compare then or just make comments and observations about what happens when we change these variables. We've already seen that when they're zero, they produce straight horizontal lines. Now, what happens if A is changed to two? Now, you can see that there has been a stretch in the Y direction, a stretch with a scale factor of two. You can just about see the yellow outline of the previous graph because all of these we're going to compare against cosine x. What I'm going to do is draw a second graph in red of cosine x and we can ignore the yellow silhouette. It's a little bit faint for the screen here. Just exit and then return to the graph input screen here. I'm just going to input this as y equals cosine x in red. If we press modify again, then we can see that we've got y equals cosine x on there permanently so we've always got that to compare against so we're just looking for how the blue graph the one we're modifying compares with the red graph and hopefully you can see if you if you weren't too sure before you can see that this is a stretch in the y direction scale factor of two what happens if we press right here on the direction pad is that will then increase that by an increment of one remember the step is one so we can increase this up by one now A is three, we can see that we've got a stretch in the Y direction with scale factor of three. So let's start using these uh, increase and decrease, which is left and right on the direction pad. Uh, let's see what happens when we have a negative value of A. So now we have an A of negative one. Remember the red graph is the original cosine X, and then we have a negative cosine X, minus one times cosine X is the blue. You can see that that is a reflection. 
So we have a reflection of the graph in the x-axis. And what about negative 2? Well, we still have the reflection in the x-axis and it's also stretched by a scale factor of 2. And we can view so on and so on as we change uh, A. Let's just actually reset that back to 1. Let's have a look at how the graph changes when we alter B. So let's just select B and we'll use the increase and decrease right and left on the direction pad. Let's increase B to 2. This is the graph of Y equals cosine 2X. You can see that the maximum and minimum are still the same, but the number of periods that are displayed on the screen has increased. In fact, there's twice as many uh, displayed as there were previously. You can see that the graph actually follows this pattern of going from a maximum of one down to negative one and back to the maximum of one when the original graph has only reached that minimum of negative one. We've essentially got twice as many displayed on screen. Now this is going to be a stretch in the x direction but the uh, scale factor is going to be a half on this particular graph. Now let's see what happens if we increase that to three. Well this time we've got three times as many periods going on on the graph as we had before. So this is going to be a stretch in the x direction horizontal direction with a scale factor of one third. So the scale factor is going to be one over your value for B. Now let's have a look at what happens if we uh, put in a negative value of B. Let's go straight for negative one. Right, well the graph seems to have disappeared but it's actually hidden uh, behind Y equals cosine X, the red graph that we've already got displayed on there. Why is that? It is because cosine X is an even function so cosine negative x equals cosine x and you might have used that fact in some of your uh, mathematical work already so we have the same graph so all that's happened is it's hidden behind the display of y equals cosine x however if this was an odd function such as y equals sine x you would see a reflection in the y-axis but we can't see that because we've got an even function with cosine x and it will be the same when we decrease this to negative 2 and again the reflection isn't obvious the reflection in the y-axis it would be with sine not with cosine but we've still got that stretch going on twice as many periods displayed so a scale factor of one half maybe you might want to try this with y equals sine x versus y equals sine minus 2x right let's reset this back to y equals cosine x that's an a of 1 a b of 1 and a c of 0 but we're going to alter c and then see what happens so let's increase c to 1 now what's happened so remember red is the original graph y equals cosine x well it appears that the graph has moved uh, so that is a translation what is the vector well we'll look at the point zero one which is actually the intercept point on the original graph this is now translated to negative one one we've been translated by vector negative c zero so there's been no movement in the y direction but in the x direction it's been a translation by negative one let's see what happens if we change c to two you can see that has translated to left. So that would be by vector negative two, zero. And you can see that the general rule there is that it will translate by vector negative C, zero. And let's see what happens if we enter a C value of negative one. You can see we've still got a translation. This time it's moving right as we're looking at it. This would be a translation of vector one, zero, but the same rule applies. It's a translation of negative C, zero, the negative of negative one of course being positive one so it translates one to the right and therefore if you put in negative two it would be two to the right and so on so there we go how we can use the built-in graphs to explore the transformation of certain functions let's just go back and have a look again what else is available so from the graph menu it's tool f4 and then f3 for built in and you can see there's others available here we've got a linear graph a completed square expanded quadratic a cubic and then we've got three trigonometric functions there it might be worth exploring a similar sort of thing with sine 
uh, sine x as well and you can perhaps see that reflection in the y-axis that you get when you change b to a negative but also you've got others there to explore as well such as quadratics very useful feature to explore what happens with these as these change especially if you have a transformation question to answer and you're not too sure which direction it might maybe translates or that it stretches uh, you can use the built-in functions to explore that in more detail and help you to describe those transformations don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos that's it for this video thank you very much for watching and i shall see you next time on the calculator guide